Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the SDL programming series. In this lesson, we're going to continue talking about tile maps. So make sure to check the description below and see the previous video as we'll be building on that. But just to give you a quick review of this tile map here, I'll talk about it in a moment in the code. And what we want to achieve today is the ability to scroll our tile map left to right. Because oftentimes in games like, say, Super Mario, you have different tiles as you move across the world. That's what simulates the larger world. Now, what we're actually displaying is just the same number of tiles here, but we're just changing the data. So I'll go ahead and show you how to do that. So again, here's the basic idea. We're in my actual window that I'm drawing, and I'll bring in the actual program here. This is my SDL window here, what I'm highlighting. And of course, we've got our title bar here with the you know, SDL window and so on. But again, I want to be able to see the data that comes after this. So that data still exists somewhere in our process. It's just not visible. But eventually, I will want to be able to, say, scroll over here and be able to see the rest of this data as I move my character or maybe just scroll this tile map automatically. So that's what I'll eventually be showing you here in this lesson. Um, so that's the basic idea. And at the least, we'll want to be able to just start by handling scrolling to the right so we can see some data. And then maybe we'll talk about going up and down, but I think you'll get the same idea. All right, so I'll go ahead and just leave this here as a reminder for what we are doing here uh, with our palette. Uh, but we are going to need some tools here, like keyboard input. So again, if you need a reminder from this series about what, how to do uh, the keyboard uh, states here, you can go ahead and check out the wiki. Of course, my videos here, if you search uh, get keyboard state, but let's just go ahead and start uh, or keep this in mind here as we review the code. Okay, so a quick code review again, otherwise watch that previous video. We create our SDL window, initialize SDL as always. Then we create our window, create our render as always. And then the real important part here was again, creating our tile map here. Now I show you how to do that in GIMP in the previous video, but again, the basic idea, if I just go ahead and show you uh, that image was that we create a tile map. In this case, the tiles are equal size. They don't have to be, uh, but a 32 by 32 pixels. And then the key was sampling from each of those tiles as we need them in our actual data structure. All right, so that was the basic idea there. I'll go ahead and get rid of this. And uh, that's creating our texture and freeing the surface. And then here's our actual data structure here, this tile map where we randomly assign values of uh, one, two, three, or four to represent which tile we actually want to represent. Now, what we're actually going to do today is uh, grow this tile map structure here. So instead of just being 20 by 15, let's just go ahead and make it, say, uh, 40 by 15 here. And that's, again, going to increase our tiles here. OK, so that's how much tile data that we have here. So let's go ahead and scroll down a little bit here. And I'll go ahead and get to our tile rendering code. So again, from the previous video, here's how we select each of the tiles. And I just created some rectangles to do that. And then our loop here, which is going to be the more interesting part here. Now we need to handle input, and ideally we would handle this in a another function, but I'm going to skip the abstraction for now just so we can get something up and running. So here I want to be able to handle tile input. I'm just going to create a static uh, variable here to keep track of our offset and the x position. And initially this value is going to be zero. Now again, you'd probably want a data structure to keep track of where your camera is in the world, but for now I'm just going to save that state in a static variable. All right, and now let's actually handle getting the keyboard state, SDL get keyboard uh, state. A null parameter indicates that we're returning uh, the entirety of our keyboard here. And this is returning a uh, const u int eight pointer. Uh, and we'll just call this keys here. Okay. So let's see if that much uh, is working and compiling should be so far. So far, so good. Now, if you read the actual documentation, um, you you don't need to do this in your loop and constantly create this variable. This this pointer that is returned is good for the entirety of the program. In fact, that's what it's uh, stating down here. Um, so it might actually be a little bit wiser for us to move this outside of our infinite loop just as a best practice. Um, let's just go ahead and do that. Uh, retrieve pointer to keys. And again, I usually like to put a P if I have a pointer to something here. So 
pointer to our keys, pointer to our keyboard state, whatever you want to name it here. And then now we need to actually uh, grab some of those keys here. So we'll say if, um, and we got to remember again how to uh, return uh, a key here. So once we get our uh, keyboard state, uh, let's go ahead and look at the uh, scan code functions. So again, I'll just put in SDL, uh, get a keyboard or get the, uh, the actual uh, scan code. Sorry, SDL uh, scan code. Um, and we can go ahead and look at these. Uh, let's go ahead and just look at our table here. And we want the SDL scan code for the right key, which is just right here. So you can choose whatever keys you want. Again, a little bit of a refresher there and just how to get uh, this, the scan keys. Um, and that's from our P uh, keys array, where we're checking if that value is one or not. And then we'll update our offset. Um, in this case, um, Let's just go ahead and increment it by one here, and that'll be it. Now, since our tile map is 40 units long here, so let's just go ahead and label that here. So it's 40 units long. And again, I'm just approximating, uh, but we're only displaying uh, 20 at a time, and we will be able to go backwards. So we do want to do a little bit of bounds checking here. Uh, and let's go ahead and while we're at it, add in the ability to go to the left here. I'll go ahead and do left, and that'll be minus minus. And we'll just say if our offset x uh, is less than 0, our offset x equals 0. And if our offset uh, x is greater than uh, 39, then our offset x equals 39. Because again, where do those numbers come from? Well, if I scroll up to where our tile map is, it's uh, 40 by 15 here. All right, so that's the idea. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of a hack in here when I do the uh, input here. And I'm just gonna put a delay here. Uh, let's go ahead and work with a delay of 20 every time I do a keyboard input, uh, just to slow things down a little bit. Now you probably don't wanna put this in your real time um, loop anywhere, but again, just for the purposes of this demo. All right, so with that said, let's go ahead and do a compile, make sure I didn't make any mistakes. Looks like I made a few uh, tiny ones here. Uh, oh, just with the spelling of uh, offset uh, x here. So I'll go ahead and fix that. Offset x and copy paste error in two places. And looks like we're still compiling here. All right. Now, how are we actually moving the tiles around here? Well, I want to display the 0 to 20 rectangles. Again, that's this uh, sort of fixed region here. Um, so what I need to do is replace the data, right? So as I move my offset, my offset's initially uh, zero. So it's 20 plus offset X at this position, right? I'm drawing all 20 tiles or, or whatever number this is, depending on this, how you sized your window. Um, that's where I want to sort of reposition things. So where I'm really switching or what I really want to do for my zero tile is uh, update the data that I'm drawing from the tile map here. Because again, this outer loop here is just saying, you know, draw all the uh, rows across here, you know, one at a time uh, in all the different uh, columns. Okay. Uh, so that's the idea here. Uh, so let's go ahead into our switch statement here and add our offset X. And let's go ahead and give this a compile. Uh, now it compiles. Let's go ahead and give it a run. Um, and sometimes I like to just compile again, and then I'll put the ampersands uh, in one line with and, and if it successfully compiles, this returns the success code, uh, then I'll just run the program. So save ourselves a little bit of time. Let's bring the window here, see if we crash and burn. I go to the right, looks like it's working. Uh, if I go to the left, it's uh, not going back, but that looks pretty good here. Now, it looks like I haven't actually populated any data here, though. So there's nothing in my tile map. So let's go ahead and see where I maybe forgot to update one of these uh, values to 20 here. Uh, so let's see. It looks like I uh, increased our tile map size here, but I forgot to actually randomly assign uh, some tile data there. Uh, and if our tiles are zero, then that's empty space. And that's actually fine. Again, the way that I set this up, with generating the random values, I want my tiles to be one, two, three, or four. 
uh, just like the actual image. Uh, again, this is just something that I sort of do for my tile maps. Again, if the tile data is one, two, three, or four, this is how it's laid out. And then zero just means empty. There is no switch case for the empty tile. Okay, so let's go ahead and try that, assuming we have some uh, data everywhere. Uh, and then if we go ahead and run this, let's bring out our window. And if I go to the right, we'll see some new data here until, of course, we get to the end of our screen. Uh, and I can push it all the way uh, to our edge here. So, you know, depending on how many tiles we actually want to show, um, this uh, bounds check that we did, uh, let me go ahead and decrease this here. Uh, you know, sometimes we don't want the player to actually see what's beyond the map here in our actual output. So if I say offsets greater than 39, let's maybe change that to, you know, uh, 39 or 29 or basically the offset you're looking for is uh, however big your window is, right? You don't want to go beyond that bounds. I'll leave that as an exercise for you um, just so we can keep this short. Um, and then the other thing you might try if you're just following along here is how to move up and down. Again, you'll do the same thing for moving your keys uh, or detecting if you have an up or a down press uh, and then changing the offset. And that'll be something to think about. Now, I had this comment and I might have mentioned it in the other video about actually creating your tile maps. Uh, so let me actually go back up here and you'll see it in the notes here um, that this tile map is 40 by 15. Um, and it's just integers, so that's still not a lot of data, but we do have to be a little bit cognizant that this is data that's stored on the stack. Um, so if these tile maps start getting really large, or if you're not just storing integers, because what you might be doing per tile, you might be storing, you might come up with a, a tile structure. Uh, and this might be something that I'd recommend doing. Uh, I'm just gonna put it in sort of pseudocode here, but you might have, uh, I'll just sort of do it in C++, a tile. Uh, type or something and it might have some attributes for example uh, you know the actual uh, tile uh, type and that might be an integer uh, you might have the actual layer uh, you might have if it's supposed to be visible you might have if it's uh, destructible um, and again these could be ints or bools depending on how many states you have or shorts or whatever my point is that the data could start getting large so you might want to heap allocate this in your actual abstraction um, so just wanted to make a note about that depending on what you're doing but for the purpose of this demo you could probably store a pretty large tile map on the stack and then it's nice and fast if you have uh, small levels uh, so anyway with that said i'll go ahead and uh, run this one more time and we'll close this out uh, and kind of move uh, left to right here. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, folks. It's kind of fun to see this in action and get your tile maps moving. Um, and, um, you know, maybe we'll look at in the next video, if folks are interested, put an actual character here and having them jump around and maybe collide with the tiles and think about some of that abstraction. Uh, because these are the key sort of foundations you need for building a platformer. And I think this is a fun exercise for you to do if you're just getting started in game dev or thinking about, you know, building a tile based uh, game. Anyways, with that said, folks, thanks for your time and attention. Make sure you comment below, as mentioned, if you have any questions, give this video a like. And uh, as always, you know, subscribe so you don't miss videos if this is of interest to you. And thanks again for your time and attention.